So, shoot, sure, today is gonna you're gonna have to be a, be aware. Be aware. This content today is not for the fa 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 faint hearted. All right. But ons gaan op jylle senewees werk vandag. Hier die webinar wat ons aanbied, it's going to work on your nerves. I feel that anxiety, it's an energy that permeates and flows through the air that contaminates each other like the coronavirus. And you know we're living in today's society and most of us are feeling overwhelmed, anxious, stressed out, we feel fear. And some of us just wants to go into the f -f 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 flight because we are too scared to go into the f -f 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 fight. Otherwise, we're just going to f -f -f faint. Hey? Because the reality is that all this anxiety is sitting in our inner system, in our body. And what happens? It's creating certain diseases. We get muscular pain. We get um, Parkinson's diseases. We get ulcers. We get strokes. And or schizoma die coronavirus or work, ne? So uh, anxiety is, is a nasty thing and it can take us down. But Vivian, over the years, you have been training incredible courses. You did not only talk about um, anxiety to your with your postgraduate hat on, right? But you also gave your own testimony and your own journey about anxiety and your ongoing quest for to really look at anxiety from different through a different cultural different cultural lenses as well um so i want you to just for today tackle this anxiety by its horns and really take us on a journey and how we can approach this f -f 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 fears that we're living in today thanks viva hello can you see me and can you hear me yes Okay, great. So, yes, I had to f -f 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 this morning because we've got such cloudy weather and such bad Wi-Fi and I had to run from one thing to the other. So I'm quickly drinking coffee so that nobody can get hurt. And I'm going to tell you about myself. So the first thing is that I'm actually on this quest to come up with solutions and tools where a human can take ownership over their own anxiety because I myself, me, myself, and I was raised with an, um, in a house where I had an anxious parent, a nervous parent, and I probably inherited the nervous gene from my parents as well. So I was this shy child, and I'm always telling people about my story and, and how that actually held me back, and, and I was wondering why is it holding me back? Uh, because I'm too scared to do something. I've got a, f I've got a, f a response that I later realized was the, f the flight response. And, and then later I developed the fight response. So I developed this attitude and it was an overcompensation. So this attitude sometimes became a bad attitude. It looked as to people as if it's a bad attitude. In the meantime, it's actually just anxiety people. They call you rebellious. In the meantime, it's anxiety. So I... I had to go into this quest and I realized that anxiety is a normal stress response that we all have. It is a normal stress response. If you have a central nervous system, you are going to have anxiety because it is the body's way of looking at danger in the environments around you and, and danger to your ego. So if you don't have anxiety, I think you possibly would be an alien or something else. But <laughs> it's the humanness factor. But anxiety has got so many faces. Um, it all depends on your culture and your age group and whether you are more Z-brain dominance or Z-brain dominance. It's going to have different faces. Um, your sex, people are playing out this anxiety because they're trying to, to hide it. So you can come over as abrupt or arrogant or over-friendly or non-communicative or stern or whatever because, and, and we might misinterpret it. In most cases, these behavioral patterns are basically just anxiety. So I'm so excited to actually talk about this topic today. Thank you very much for the one that chose the topic for the day. Um. But, you know, the problem is if we have too much trauma to our nervous system, 
to our central nervous system and we feel unsafe. We feel unsafe. You know, we nowadays don't feel unsafe so much physically. We feel unsafe psychologically. Our ego feels safe because we feel somebody is lying to us. There's deception. There's untrustworthiness. There's gaslighting. There's uh, conflicting belief systems. Th those things are the things that makes us to feel unsafe. And the moment we feel unsafe, then the central nervous system kicks in and it actually starts the whole anxiety process, which I'm going to discuss with you in a lot of detail today. So um, the moment it kicks in, it actually starts secreting. It secretes stress hormones. Um, and that is also a good thing because we are meant to, to get superpower when we feel that there's a threat and we've got to either fight the threat or flight from the threat. And for that, you need special extra power. So adrenaline is that superpower. It's the most incredible thing if we can actually have it in little bottles because that's a really superpower stuff. But the problem is if you are full of if you are having no real threat, it's not a physical thing. It's not a a, a a wild dog, and you must now run away or a you know a bush pig. Then you don't work. You don't actually process it. It doesn't get burned through your system, and it stays in your body, and it lies in your fibers of your muscles, and it just heaps up more and more, and it becomes a toxin. And that that's where the problem lies. So. The more you have stress and it just keeps on and every single day you are in a deceiving situation and people that are not honest and you can't trust the situation, you don't know who is actually stabbing you in the back, slowly but surely you're developing this chemical soup of confusion upstairs and and it actually is going to to, to infiltrate your brain so that your higher brain can't work properly anymore. And slowly but surely, you start having more and more symptoms of neurotic, neurosis, they call it. Um, and psychosis is then the end result of it. And psychosis is where you start losing, losing um, your ability to function in the society and to make decisions. Then you're going to start going into it the psychosis of schizophrenia or, or the deepest depression that where you can't see the bark from the trees and you just want to you want to shoot your brain out in the meantime you are having a wonderful life you can't you you can't actually use your higher brain so this unsafety and fear mongering starts actually always in that first house where we're living in the first caregiver the parent the people who are superior or who are, are adult towards you, you know, and you are the weaker one. That's where it starts. And slowly but surely, when we are that little child or that employee or subservient, when we are still weak, we are um, getting all of this. And it creates a paralysis of your higher brain. And where you're in your higher brain, you have your consciousness to be lack and love. You have your conscience, which is your morals. And all those things slowly but surely get messed up and you develop this cognitive dissonance. And you start throwing out fundamental universal laws out of your life. The principle of, of, of equal exchange is the essence of life. Balanced transactions, basic stuff. You can't even understand it anymore because your primitive brain is this this chemical soup that is uh, actually taking over the higher brain function, which is the human function. So nowadays, post-traumatic stress, you know, they call it P PTSD. And uh, we previously, I mean, when I studied these things at university level, we learned that this is coming from people that come from war zones. In the meantime, we are now in a state where it's our minds are in war zones. We've got like a battlefield of our mind going on. And, and people are showing the symptoms of post-traumatic stress syndrome, whether they had a, a war or not. It's just it's just showing. It's, it's becoming very scary. So I also see it when I run these volunteer exchange programs at the ATB Eco Farm. I, I'm getting the biggest shocking, shocking realization. Now, I come from when I was a teenager... I come from the 80s, 
<laughs> and I was in the food trackers and the and the girl guides, and I overcame my fear. I I had a father that challenged me to actually experience nature and not be scared of hohos and heights and water and all sorts of things. And nowadays, I see the new generation; their brains are 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 having like mental illness at early age. They're about to fall apart. They've got fibromyalgia, fatigue syndromes. Um, they walk in states of unconsciousness. They deny their own reality. It's almost like a, a type of a, a a DID. You know what is a DID? It's um, dissociated identity disorder. So uh, almost going into a fantasy life and make-believe life because they cannot actually really handle the ability to respond every single day to everything that's happening to them. And so they become professional in substantiating and justifying and to try to get away with why it's right for things to be wrong and why they are not contributors, but more just consumers. So the next slide is the one about anxiety down and volition up. So this is the only way we are going to counteract the vice of anxiety is if we specialize in the virtue of volition. So anxiety is the vice and virtue is the is volition. And volition is that intrinsic motivation that propels a person to act and respond to life's challenges, who actually can respond, who, who gets uh, that, that energy activated inside them. And it's the power of the will. It, and it causes the productivity, the resilience, the end result, the success. Whilst anxiety is that opposing force that kills it. So these two components are very important to understand. And parents uh, must understand it. The people that work with the young little em emerging vulnerable people. We've got to know that if we are going to get a person's a child's anxiety up or anyone's anxiety up, then you're going to get the volition down. And then if the anxiety goes out, the person actually doesn't believe in self. They become more and more externally locust. They need, help me. Somebody must do it for me. Do it, help me. You become e luck. we call it. External locus of control is the hard way that kicks in slowly but surely. Don't believe enough in themselves. So they develop all these different fears. So we have to understand volition so that we can grow internal locus of control that says, I am okay. And I am valuable and I'm able to respond. And it starts at a very, very early age. Okay, so let's have a look at this man. I mean, people like Edison and J.K. Rowling and Oprah Winfrey and all these books that New York bestsellers where we, where we read about people that became so successful. It's like this guy that's up the wall. There's something that they're doing right, and that is the ability to put their mind over matter, over that matter, and get themselves into a higher brain mind state, irrespective of how bad that circumstances it, it would be and, and how scary the moment would be. The brain is not looking at the scariness. It's actually in a higher brain state, busy solving, solutioning. How am I going to maneuver my, my legs to get out? Look at this next boy. I mean, where does he come from? What an amazing kid. I would like to employ him. That's the type of humans we're looking for. It's a person who has got a vision, a purposeful vision that is having empathy, driving him up that pole. And and, and that's what we're looking for. In the workplace, if we have anxiety, it's a productivity disaster. We can't get people to go against gravity and go up the poles. It's going to just cause more and more death to the employment situation and the economy of South Africa. We've got to have people of this type of caliber. So where does fear come from? Fear is fundamentally, first and foremostly, a learned behavior. So how does fear start? If you, for instance, look at a, a mommy with a baby on the lap, and the mommy suddenly sees there's a small little snakey key that moves there, and the mommy says, oh, and she makes that sound, 
<laughs> Even my dog is making that sound. I'm getting a fright now. So the mommy says, oh! and when you say, oh! you actually creating a fear that's going to start transferring to that child. So the, the child is going to start looking in the direction that the mommy is looking at. And the, and then it's going to associate that little snaky, that little innocent thingy that's like a lizard with something that they must be scared of. On the, in, on the contrary, I mean, if that mommy was just breathing in and out, getting perspective, getting that anxiety down, and going backwards slowly, but slowly, then grabbing the broom, then twisting the little snake kiki around the broom and balancing it. And the baby key is looking at the mommy and then taking the snake out and then going it into the rose bush. What's going to happen with that baby? The baby is going to have a role model of a higher brain. And that little baby is going to turn into an e eagle, this little eaglet, and not a chicken that must be scared. It's going to want to actually eventually catch its own food and it's eventually going to have dominion over that fear. And that's where it starts. It's role modeling. It's role modeling by parents and by us as facilitators of change and leaders. So we cannot afford with little vulnerable people to wake the fear alarm up. We cannot do it. We've got to create a cool and collected way and we've got to actually use our breathing and, and all these lack of things that I'm going to teach you. We're going to give you seven tools today. So we've got to stop saying, pass up and money and don't and what, that, not, whatever, because that just creates the I can't inside the brain of that child. You know, if I look at the preteen kids that, that has been coming on the A to B kids camps, at least 50% of them are on medication for anxiety. They come here and you've got to hand out the pills. And, you know, if you really look at what's happening, the parents and the teachers alike, they can't cope. They haven't got the skills that they can give to that child. So they run into something outside of them and they look for a solution. So they'll say, oh, your child must go on medication because I can't handle your child. The child can't handle himself. The parents can't handle the child. And eventually all you do is you're dumbing them down and you're making them think that they've got a mental health problem. So let's look at the fear symptoms, what it looks like when it's awakened. It's trembling. It's muscle tension. It's stomach pains and issue. It's doff in the cup. It's worried. It's being on the edge. It's a sense of dread. It's even left arm paralysis. It's a crippling thing. The, the, the manifestation of this anxiety. And that's why people think it's something crazy, because it looks crazy. But I like to discuss it according to the f -f 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 That is an A to B word. Fight, flight, fear, freaking furious. I'm f -f -f frustrated. I've got, I'm having a frenzy. I'm fapping. I'm, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm flighting, running away. I'm going into fantasy mode because I'm denying, trying to find a way to cope and deny. I'm fawning. Do you know the word fawn? <laughs> it's where you like, almost like in Afrikaans, they'll call it hot grape. It's like, it's like you're trying to be nice and over nice and you know, you know, because you're actually scared. So it's like an over friendliness that, that is just another sign of anxiety and another face of anxiety. And you know what? These f -f 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 -fs create Internal destruction, firstly, so we call it masochism. So fear causes masochism because you start binge eating and now you're going to get yourself into insulin problem and diabetes, type 2 diabetes. You're going to start smoking, or you're going to start drinking too much, or you're going to start f -f 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 taking things in through your mouth. And that's, that's all masochistic because all of those things are destructive. Um, or you're going to pop pills. And it doesn't mean popping pills is a good thing because there's always side effects to it. Um, so it's an ongoing masochistic process until we get to the moment of truth and we overcome these damn three fears. So yes, the three fears. Look at the three fears. It's when you are fearing death. In other words, you're fearing, you're scared of everything. You are, you're bang for alles. Rather safe than sorry. Oh, I can't handle. When people say, either bang, yanas, do you, yan. You're just suffering from the fear of death. 
I mean, all of us are going to die once. What on earth do you want to fear it and then immobilize yourself because of that? So fear of death, we call it the death, fear of death, fear of abandonment and fear of f -f failure. Fear of death is all the hokos, the cold water, the the uncomfortable conditions of nature, um, heights, uh, uh, um, animals, moving things, slimy, mud, all those things are part of fear of death. And then fear of abandonment is actually our biggest problem in society, in mankind's civilization today, is everyone is worried what other people think of them and they are fearing rejection and fearing abandonment. And then they doing all sorts of behavior that is not authentic to self and that doesn't come out of their own brain. They just following, they become externally locused, that fear of abandonment. And then the fear of failure is where you are taught that it's not good enough and competitive, that competitive nature that if you've grown up in that where it's got to be better and it's got to be nicer and I'm not good enough, so I've got to just work harder. And all you do is you start becoming a workaholic that eventually burns yourself out. So look at this. Um, we are actually the most intelligent brains. We, we, we just, I mean, we're the top of the intelligent species. We are, we are, there is absolutely nothing that, that is more intelligent than us. So um, I like to, you can have all those like things on the internet where you can see why we are so intelligent and why we've got a higher brain and we've got different levels of intelligences that cannot compare to other very intelligent animals and mammals. But I like the, the triangle because that's the brain development hierarchy. A brain develops first through reflexes whilst it's still in the mommy stomach. And the reflexes also are uh, uh, present, maybe up to six, some of them up to nine months after birth so that the child can survive through suck reflex and moral reflex and those reflexes. And then it's got to integrate. And now the next survivalist reflex is the primitive brain. And that's our fear machine. And that is the second level of intelligence. And now your brain must integrate the negative effects of the primitive brain by getting a a lot of exposure and stimulation to things that make you scared to learn how to handle it in order to overcome it so that it overcomes the negative effects of the primitive brain. That's learning at its best. Explorative learning experience with materials and tools and situations and and focus and every possible thing to integrate that second level of brain development. And the third level is then a combination of Z, which is typically school, scholastic, systematic, step by step, doing a task, getting it right from, to task completion point, learning about numbers, the numerical things, the quantitative things, which is the zoom in brain, the analytical brain, the ZO brain is then the other half of the brain that is the, the bigger picture brain, the strategy, the entrepreneurialism, the relational things, the interplay between connectivity between things, the synthesizing of things, the solutions of things, the spirituality of things, the, the cosmos, we, why, 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 what's my purpose on this earth, understanding all those things and that you can fire on all your cylinders and then to transcend to a higher level of of non-tangible, abstract intelligences, which is the four-dimensional intelligence, which has got to do with hope, hope, hope in mankind, hope in, 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 in what is happening around me, hope that things will play out well, holding on to abstract things. If you don't have hope, you, you're holding on to yourself or you're going to shoot your brains out because you've got no hope, you become hopeless. Or faith is another abstract intelligence to actually have faith. It's a spiritual intelligence, neuroscientifically. Love, to get to a point where you're not just full of conditions. What are you going to give me? But unconditional love, to be able to do that. So we have to become lack and la and realize your brain has to develop to the highest level of being human. And that brings you to faith as opposed to fear. Those are the two opposites. You've got to be lack and la. So take your hand and do this. Put your two fingers close to your eyes and say, hey, I must wake up. I must get into my higher brain. I must be like a nga. Like a nga. It's a very, very like a... Sounds like a gangster nga, Vivian. <laughs> no, not the gangster one. But maybe, 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 
maybe we do need to be a little bit brain gangster because I'm seeing yeah we need we need to we need to get tough yeah we need to get tough brain gangster so this is your sign for being a brain gangster get into your higher brain and not in your primitive brain so if anybody in the workplace so there's a lack of sign to use with all your staff as a leader and to show them hey you must be lacking more which means hey switch on your higher brain get out of that primitive brain um, and we can use these signs without talking too much because words can be misunderstood so signs are always better and that's why a to b movement has got all these signs and we develop more and more because of the rainbow nation and we we don't always interpret things correctly and then fall back into our primi. So we've got to stop believing the lie, the false evidence appearing real, the fear brain, the false evidence appearing real brain. We've got to stop believing it it's an alarm system only that's what your anxiety is doing with you it's just an alarm system and get yourself that poster keep calm it's a false alarm because your primitive brain is developing a mind of its own and it triggers for the little smallest little thing because you never integrated it properly when you were a child and now it's always overactive and it's always you know oversensitive and we've got to be so sensitive to people and, and that's why the people with victim hardwires are always jumping in and trying to rescue the situation and trying to prevent conflict because if so, so scared of everybody's primitive brains in the meantime if it's a, it's just a flippant primitive brain <laughs> You've got to jump into that fight and you've got to get into higher brain mode. You're not going to die. And the person that is starting to have these symptoms and the symptoms are getting more and more because the primitive brain becomes an autonomic type of response and it takes over everything the more it was stimulated as a child. And it jumps in and it wants to just keep on giving you alarm. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> And you know what? Hey, pass up to say things like that. Because remember the CPTWA principle, everything you can conceive and believe it's true, you, you're going to achieve. So if you think you're going to die, pass up. Your brain is powerful. It can actually get you there. So I don't go there. <laughs> I don't go there. I rather see it just as a false evidence appearing real. And that's how I'm keeping my brain healthy. It's all in my head. I can control the outcome because there's more things in my head than just my primitive brain. There's a higher brain. There's a two-dimensional Z brain that can bring the scholastic knowledge of the snake into the picture and say, hey, this is just a spitting cobra. So all I have to do is I've got to put on my glasses. So that's the knowledge component of your brain. Then you've got the three-dimensional ability, the practical ability. Then you can make a practical thing in a practical cage to to creatively, constructively solve the thing. I mean, use those parts of your brain. So that is what is so important, that it's all in your head and there's many more cool things in your head. So don't kill yourself with stinking thinking and let that from me go, because actually it's only a ghost. It's only a ghost. So we're going to teach you a little bit about the ghost. Pastors. Can you play that song for us, Gillian? Also, okay. long put on my Viv, I, brain. I hat. couldn't. I couldn't get the video, the the song. It kept telling me because I don't have a license, I can't get it. But um, those okay. of us who were born, is it in the eighties? And also recently, they redid Ghostbusters. It's that chorus that's so amazing, where it just says, "I ain't afraid of no ghost." <laughs> Yeah. So, so Viv, I mean, you showed us a very that that video with the guy um, climbing over the snake. That was very, very spooky for me. But I feel like a lot of the spooks are the the things in our heads, right? It's the things we keep telling ourselves, like I can't do this, or I'm never going to make it, or because my father was an alcoholic, I'm going to be one. It's those spooks, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, those spooks. Those are your spooks. Yeah. So you create all these spooks in your brain. So I want you to all please go and download the Ghostbusted and Ghostbusters and you play that song, keep it on downloaded, have it on your phone, and every time you think it is a spook 
or you interpret it as a spook, then you play the Ghostbusters and then you say, I'm not afraid of no ghost. So you've got to have a lot of things that counteract it, a lot of tools in your toolkit. So let's have a look at Diane. I just love to see Diane on the Facebook page. She's 100 years old. She is afraid of no ghost. She realized that all those things were in her head and she's now um, uh, some record holder um, or at the age of 100. She doesn't care about the flaps and the, the wrinkles and the whatever. She says, bring it on, baby. <laughs> And she knows she's going to die, All we're all going to die once, and at least we can die whilst we're doing lucky things out of our comfort zone. And she knows that people can't really reject you because all of them, every human suffers from their own issues. So why do we fear this abandonment and rejection? And why don't we just love ourselves? And the more we love ourselves, the, the, the more other people will be magnetically attracted to you automatically. And with, with flaps and wrinkles and all. And then fear of failure. Failure is such a ridiculous concept, the fear of failure, because failure is actually the only way you can learn. So you've got to fail forward. That is the fundamental principle of learning. You've got to go into a task and say, let me try. Okay, I've made this mistake. Okay, who can help me? Show me how can I do this thing better? And eventually you develop very deep neural pathways, five times more than anybody that is too scared to try. And that just sits in the classroom. And that's not what you want. So um, that is so amazing, amazing, amazing to have yeah. people like Diane. We've got to post ourselves was, doing crazy. We were so inspired by Diane. We we wrote her own theme song for her. And we thought, you know, she's probably on the road there singing her own Ghostbuster version. Um, and I love this idea, but we could write our own yeah. song and, and keep bringing good thoughts into our heads, not making space for the yeah. bad stuff. Cool. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, that's the song in your brain and in your head. So it's all about these songs you have inside you that change your, renews your mind and changes the way you think. Mm. Okay, let's go to. So, Helen. so we shared this um, really cool video with me. Uh, it's absolutely worthwhile to go and have a look at it. There's a classic video. It's really much loved. Uh, it's a skit by Bob Newhart and it's called Stop It. Um, I highly recommend that you watch it. So Bob, he plays a therapist. He has a very unusual approach. A woman comes to him with a fear of being buried alive in a box, along with many other anxieties. So her fear of being buried alive in a box is really affecting her life. She can't go into a lift. She's constantly fretting. She's worried. She, she's uncomfortable in square spaces. And instead of guiding her through complex therapy, addressing her past, uh, Bob just keeps giving her the same very official advice. He says, stop it. And every time that she tries to explain her fear or her trauma or why she is like, he just keeps telling her, stop it, stop it. So, I mean, the humor in the skit is obviously how oversimplistic it is, uh, especially when it comes to something as complex as a phobia. But it's kind of subtle also how it highlights that sometimes we um, like the our, our ungrounded fears, like being buried in a box, mm. you know, it's unlikely <laughs> to happen to her. We give it too much control in our lives. And, and while just stop it might not be the whole solution. It just reminds us that we don't, we shouldn't give that much power um, to, mm. to the challenge and we should challenge our, our fears a little bit more, you know, so Viv, maybe rather than me constantly worrying about, what people think or what might hypothetically happen, maybe like that. And I should also just stop it. <laughs> just stop it, Helene. <laughs> sure. Exactly. Yeah, so many quick fixes, eh? So Vivian, we are living in a modern, we are living in a modern world with amazing comforts and progresses and quick fixes. At the one hand, human progress is beautiful. We are constantly coming up with the next best innovative thing. Better bread, race horses to run faster, better equipment to create higher quantities of goods. And then we go to medical. We run to the doctor for a quick fix. 
to give us the instant pills to help us. And technology is catching up with us. We've got faster air cons and heaters and jacuzzis. Everything is for immediate satisfaction and comfort, right? Yeah. yeah. So what the fa fa fa? We are fed up, Vivian. Tell us about makeup, materialism, and medicine. <laughs> Yeah, so we've got to run to more makeup and materialism and medicine to cope with, with this modern world. And yes, it is our Zor brain. It's that innovative brain. It's a very high intelligence that creates all these amazing stuff. And it don't, you know, I can use chat GPT and all sorts of cool things. Don't say that is not good. But let me tell you. Go back to the brain development hierarchy and then you remind yourself what happened wrong. We did not integrate the negative effects of the primitive brain as a child properly because we were overprotecting that child or we were putting thinking that it's good to discipline the child with discipline and actually overstimulate that primitive brain. Now, the primitive brain is underdeveloped. So we're underdeveloped humans with higher brain functions that are working but the primitive brain is still alive so that monster is still very deeply actively alive in you and now we are trying to now use all this go more into comfort zone so that we can run away even more from the neural pathway growths of the primitive brain sit in all these comfortable spaces clinical places and where we can have control over stuff and the problem is that um in our modern life, we work we, we work now too hard because now we've got more tools, but we're working harder and harder because we are driven still by our fear of failure and our fear, fear of abandonment. And now we've got irregular sleep patterns. So now we're not getting enough happy hormones of melatonin inside our blood. And our Z brain that's supposed to keep the circadian rhythms going, which is dealing with the time, this time for sleeping and time to get up and time to sleep. Our own Z brains are becoming the, the workaholics because they are suffering from the fear of abandonment and fear of failure. And now our, it affects our eating patterns, our gut microbiome. It changes that inner microbiome inside our gut and creates all sorts of diseases. And so there's a disconnect, a massive disconnect. We also run if we're now psychologically stressed and then we run for all sorts of little treatments, co cognitive behavioral therapy, but then it's too cognitive. It doesn't take us back into developing ourselves independently, the neural pathways to actually sort out that underdeveloped primitive brain. And 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 it's we sit in groups because we have to quick fix this this the psychology and it doesn't actually yeah. have permanent effects and recovery, yeah. and yeah. um it's a nightmare. It's becoming a more yeah. nightmare. If you look at the antidepressants, if I can just tell yeah. you about that, antidepressants. They, yeah. Yeah, Vivian, I was just thinking now, I mean, we, we, I'm just watching the time and for me, I'm just looking at, so what the f -f 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 must we do with this runaway train? Can you give us some tools in the workplace and in our lives? Because it sounds like if we don't get the tools for this runaway tool, train, we, you know, if we have this underdeveloped primitive brain and we don't know how to manage our alarm system, what the f -f 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 must we do? Can you help us to take ownership of our overactive primitive brain? What tools do we, do we need so that, that we can use to basically support this brain integration? Yeah, so instead of popping the pills and going through 40 antidepressants to find out which one is going to work for you, we've got to go internal. Stop running for somebody. Help me, help me, help me. Try to go more internal. So firstly, so now I'm going to give you seven tools. The first one is we've got to very quickly educate everyone around us, all our loved ones, all the young and upcoming people around us, everyone we work with to understand the same things that I've now taught you, that anxiety is just an alarm system. You are not a mental case. It's just an alarm system. And it's trying to spook you and don't be spooked. 
And we've got to teach them how you actually are going to default to fast in masochistic behavior, like little youngsters. I mean, before they understand anxiety, they they want to fit in with their peers. It's so, you know, this peer pressure is such a big thing. So they actually then go and do all sorts of things so that they can feel calm. So they think by smoking and by doing all these stuff, uh, they're going to get more calm and now they can laugh and now they can be themselves and whatever. So they're already going masochistic and not even understanding their primitive brain. So we've got to get the understanding back that they can take a step back to understand what is this thing in me. And that is the education that is more important than any schooling. And then the second tip is then that we must understand our happy hormones secretion machine. Your brain is a pharmaceutical company. You've got to learn to understand it. If you don't manage it, it's going to automatic secrete negative bad hormones because the primitive brain has a mind of its own. So if you're going to allow negative energy in your ecosystem, power zapper people um, or addictive people, you must throw them out. They cannot other than creating negative energy. And that's going to permeate in the air around you and everyone is going to catch it up like a virus. And and then, you know, if you, if you perpetuate the message in your brain, I'm not safe, I'm not safe, I'm not safe. What are you doing? You're secreting bad hormones, adrenaline. So you cre you're stimulating the bad hormone secretion of your pharmaceutical company to happen. And, and I just have to mention that there's this thing about... Um, the destructive dance, they call it, between money and your mental state. So the more money you want, the more fear of being robbed. So there goes your fear that secretes adrenaline. The more narcissistic shame because you're not perfect enough. Now you're secreting cortisol. And the more you have to fix the loved one's anxieties around you and um, and the spoiled brat children because you put them in comfort zone instead of going them out into tough love nature and getting their brain to integrate. And now you just pop it all. So the mental health is getting much higher with people who are chasing money. Uh, there is definitely a dance going on there. So how are we going to get the happy hormone secretion to happen? So... Happy hormones must trigger the positive emotion and it must drive fear away. So the more happy hormones you can secrete, the more you're going to drive your fear away. So let's look at laughter. Laughter is what they call the good dopamine because dopamine is quick fix uh, when you eat a, like a piece of chocolate cake or you're feeling good and doing that instant gratification things, which could be bad for you and it can lead to addictions, but not laughter. It secretes dopamine. It secretes serotonin, it secretes endorphins, and if you giggle, it secretes oxytocin. Four happy hormones you secrete when you are able to create laughter and be part of laughter environments all the time. Smile, look at smile. <laughs> it's a stress reliever. Um, it brings oxygen into your blood. It improves your immune system. It lowers your belly stress. In your belly, it becomes better. It makes you look pretty, where stress makes you look ugly. Singing, look at singing. We've got to sing much more. The right music will get your brain still and calm, and the other right music will make your brain to be enthused. But, but be careful, there's also other music that is going to stress you up. Physical exercise and, and physical labor, physical work. Work in your garden, get yourself vegetables in the garden, do physical labor if you haven't got time to go to the gym. But some people are in such stressful work um, nowadays that if they don't gym and if they don't exercise, they're actually falling apart. So, and that's the sad thing when, when you chose your career, they didn't tell you, oh, this career is gonna deplete your mental health. And especially with men that, you know, that same cowboys don't cry, they they very much faster and easier get mental health issues. If you look at the rehab world and the addiction world, you'll see definitely more men than fem males than females. Melatonin. If you have done a lot of physical work in a day, then you're going to sleep like a baby. Those are brothers with relationships with melatonin. That's your other um, big five happy hormone. And, and, and you know, if, if you burn the midnight oil, slowly but surely, you're developing a sleep disorder. And that is just a runaway train. Oxytocin, that is the happiest, happiest, amazing, most amazing happy hormone we can get. 
And that's got to do with relationships, warm communication, working with truth, say things as it is in truth and honesty so that humans can trust you and feel safe. Oxytocin is bonding hormone, feeling safe, the physical touch. It's a security blanket. If you, if you also, some people hold each other with healing hands. If you reach out your hands, you create an interconnectedness, you create a unitedness. So I'm safe. I'm safe. Um, and that's the message we want in the brain at all times. Good. Next one. Tip number three. Viv, I've, Viv, I recently heard of something called a cuddle puddle. It's where people cuddle each other because they need oxytocin. You see. You so, see, we've got to practice it. So Viv did prepare a lovely breathing exercise for us, but I think we'll have to share that um, afterwards. But Viv, just talk us about tip three and then we can go to four, please. Thanks. Okay. So breathing. Okay, so I'm going to send that to you so that you can mm. actually understand how long must you inhale how long must you keep it in and how to exhale? But there's many, many breathing exercises everywhere. And there's even this yoga laughter and you've got all sorts of cool stuff. You know, and there's so much going on. But um, so I, if you look at this one, then it's going to teach you how to inhale, exhale. Okay. But what I'm going to just say here um, is if you learn breathing, breathing is the most powerful tool. Um. And you can do this breathing and you can keep on doing it every single day. You must realize you, all of us are air hungry nowadays. We are short of breath. We've got to train. We've got to become fit. Um, get closer to yourself. You get around. Become conscious of your thinking. Every time you breathe, you actually push the primitive brain down and you bring push the higher brain down. Um, and you must ask yourself the question, myself, what is my instinct while I'm doing it? How is it manifesting on my outside, on my face and on my posture? And what is hurting me inside? How do I secrete all sorts of bad hormones that's going to eventually just make me sick? You know what? There's one more thing I have to explain to you here. You know that everything in life is a challenge to which we need to respond. And if you learn that there's a gap between, and if you can get it right, to create a gap between your challenge and your response, like Mr. Viktor Frankl, he was a psychologist. He's one of my favorites. And that A to B was definitely based on. And he said, humans who survived the Holocaust were the ones who enlarged the gap between the challenge, the terrible challenges they had, and their response. And the tool to use is breathing. The others perished and distracted their loved ones even in the process. But that is what breathing can do. It's your saving grace instrument between life and death. And the more you can pull that out of your toolkit and you can occupy your mind People that irritate you, that come to you and talk to you and they talk crap and you already can see what they're going to say. Pull out that tool. And that's difficult, but the more we practice it, the better. So breathing is really a transformative, a real transformative tool. Okay. Vivian, Good. Now. Vivian, I'm going to have to ask that we go straight to, to this one. I'm sure most of us know the brain messaging around I can and I can't, but just explain to us about the reversing of it and the and what we, how it works. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so there's, you go and check yourself, the other tool, which is just a hand sign. And then this one is actually about understanding that our message is always, I'm not safe and I'm not okay and I can't, which is the progressive negative message in the brain that we must turn around. And if we can actually know that we can turn it around to say I can and I'm okay and I'm safe and the I can is about I can try and I'm okay is I'm valuable and I'm worthy and I'm safe is there is no real danger and if I'm gonna die it's going to be in trying and the way we must also do it is we've got to 
pull in people to help us. And that's where the A to B provocateur training comes in, that transformative leadership training, that provocateering. So the more you've got somebody that can provocateer you and your volition, not your anxiety, and that can do tough love things and that can encourage you and, and challenge and say, man, you can do it. You can do it. And come, let's give you a just right challenge. And the science and the art of giving humans just the right challenges helps them then to move from that state of freeze and that state of non-response of A0, we call it. A0, the next one being A1, moving the humans on the scale from A0 to A1 to A2 towards the conscious competence state where your confidence is now grown. And that's what grows confidence. So from A0, A1, A2, A3. Okay. There's a few more tools I quickly want to give you. Um, that can go fast. And the last one is so powerful. Okay, so we've got to know we must stop thinking that discomfort is our enemy. So stop it. Stop it. Discomfort is not your enemy. Get in the ooks and start living in the ooks out of your comfort. little rules that you were growing up with and which is your culture get out of your comfort zone we're all human beings under construction and that is going to grow your higher brain so that your fear doesn't trap you anymore the tip number seven which is the last one of this series because these are just the first little tools um is when you're overwhelmed you must also stop it <laughs> because if you're overwhelmed, you must only see it as an elephant. If something is too big and it's too much, you must just see it as an elephant. And then you ask yourself the question. There's always two questions you ask yourself. How do we eat the elephant? And you always eat it one bite size at a time, which means you take the big task and now you go sit and you break it down many, 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 many small tasks, and you decide who's the Z's and the Zors that can do that, that's task man fit in the best way to do it. And you'd never ever stress about anything that is big. There is no such thing. It's just an elephant. And what's the second part of this? It's how do you eat the elephant? You can never eat it alone. You cannot eat an elephant alone. So don't even try it. You've got to bring in your power partners. We call it the PPs. You bring in the power partners. And who are our power partners? It's always the Z brain dominant and the Z brain dominant so that we can have wholeness, thinking with integrity, integrated thinking, the Z and the Zor. So you're going to get people to help you zoom out and give you new solutions and give you empathy and all sorts of other relational intelligence. You're going to get your Z brains to, to put more structure and to put things more into boxes and to help you actually breaking it down into many pieces and and to tick it off in the right way and to show you all the new technology and all the the the, the, the um, systems that you can use to actually do it. And then, there you go. You've got this the whole combination. So power partners is the last thing I want to say. And, and this is to me such a beautiful, beautiful picture because actually what it shows is it shows that we have to put in intentional work to create intentional communities, intentional people that we need to nurture. We've got to find those power partners all the time until you die you've got to look for new power partners not power zappers power partners and then you've got to nurture them doesn't matter who they are from what culture they are what age they are if they make one plus one is five and we create this interconnectedness it is the most powerful powerful thing that can happen to us and it makes you feel safe and you can trust the situation and you can talk the truth and within that situation. So don't try to be an island. Right? Don't try to do your own thing. It's not going to work. You've got to do this, that these animals are doing so well. Wow. Wow. Sure. Wow, Vivian. That has been amazing. And you've really taken us through some deep content and shared tips that we won't necessarily get through traditional self-help books or videos. And we all love this quote by Aristotle that says, you know, um, we are what we repeatedly do. So I can only imagine what type of peaceful, powerful, provocative people we will become when we do these practices daily. 
and intentional because it's got to be intentional. Breathing must be that repeated. We must repeat the, the breathing exercises, um, that mantra that says, I can, I am okay, I am safe. And proactively stepping out of our comfort zone. That is the key. Flipping that lid. These are all the practical things we can do every single day. Helene, I know we've, we're running a bit uh, out of time, but I know there's a few people that's got some questions and, and answers. Do we have some time for that, Helene? Yes, of course. So if you do need to leave, you're absolutely welcome. But if you can stay for a minute, let's see here. Tiffany had a great question. She's asking about emotions. Viv. She says emotions such as hurt and anger, can that also create anxiety or, or only fear? You know, what's that link between hurt, mm -hmm. anger, anxiety and fear? Okay, so uh, fear is your primitive brain and it sits at the bottom and it's your uh, amygdala. And if you look at the anatomy of the brain, then you'll see that the mammal brain is just above it. So the mammal brain is where the emotions sit and it triggers the mammal brain to create the emotions. And the emotions actually are then creating then the response um, and then the behavioral patterns. Uh, so that is the interplay. So they're not the same thing. The one is the fear and the one is then driving that emotion. So the That's hurt, the we all, hmm. yes, and creates that alarm. So we all come from childhood hurt and we some of us had, had more. But then if we don't actually get our own anxiety down and work on our own primitive brain, then we're going to just develop hardwires. And those are the 16 hardwires of the mind where, where the one would be vengefulness. I'm not going to forgive because I'm going to carry my pain. Because we actually don't know how to integrate the negative effects of our primitive brain. So we then develop these defense mechanisms and carry it with us. Then how do we carry it? We put it into a filing system. We call it our subconscious mind. And then it goes and sits there and we hold it there. And then that creates a toxin and that actually makes us sick and creates then the warped, hardwired behavior that we call our persona. And it's not the persona. It's actually hardwired warped behavior and we can and it holds us back from getting to that optimum authentic self that can vava voom and that can achieve the sustainable well-being that we want so that's the problems you do not want to go and put it in your subconscious mind you want to actually understand how to deal with your fear and your trauma and overcome your trauma and some people walk with it now for years because they never understood the primitive brain mm. I and mean, then thanks, Laura, for all your great comments. But uh, I'll just mention here a lovely parting comment that she had, which is uh, that we need to bring more humor into how we examine these feelings. Yes. That's Laura's comment. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Pranusha. Lovely to see your comment there. The terminology. Well, I, th I think that was also a great insight, Viv, is if we share things like the stop it video with our friends, then in future, we don't have to use too many words. You can just say, stop it. Mm, stop it. Now I know I can say it with like a no, no. yes, Viv. See, yep. like a, <laughs> and without the the burden of the words. Exactly. Yeah. Words are burdens. Mm, that's yeah. Amazing. Did you want Absolutely. to end us off with one of your favorite uh Dr. Seuss quotes, Viv. Oh, I love Dr. Seuss. You'll see on the farm how we created everything in a whimsical way that people can laugh. So Dr. Seuss quote is there saying, be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. I love it because love if you that. can actually stop having this makeup and materialistic things and you just become your authentic self it's then a proof that you got out of your primitive brain because the false self is the fa -fa -fa -fa. absolutely beautiful and so we really hope you enjoyed these three sessions it's our this was our final master class of the year our vision is yes. still to keep building on a national community of practice uh, through the A to B uh, movement uh, by growing the whole brain leadership teams that can create ecosystems for change where we can be responsive and adaptive and contributive humans. So 
please feel free to think about the first three masterclasses we held and share your feedback with us about how you feel we can take the community of mm. practice further, uh, embed it better, and which other topics, themes, and ideas we should be exploring. We really would love to hear from you. Your feedback is always very, very valuable. We are under construction and we're getting better every time. Also, if you feel like your team needs some coaching, if you feel you need some coaching, yeah. reach out to Nikki. Uh, Nikki mm -hmm. is leading, uh, is the head of our reskill division, and we are ready to support you with a variety of tools, resources, training, coaching, uh, to make sure we are embedding A to B and the occupational intelligence principles into teams where it's needed. So we're happy, happy to help you. By tomorrow, you should get your email with the video, with the slides, with Nikki's email address, and I'll add in the video for Stop It. Please have a look. Yes. Thank you, Vivian. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Hope Pleasure. You Thank you, Helene. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So Thank stop you, it. Everyone. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Helene. I'm going to stop the webinar now, Nate. Stop it. Yes. Bye. <laughs>